hello, hello. Welcome back to another episode of Flow with the Grow, a podcast for all things health and fitness and self-growth, personal growth, and uh, helping you to navigate through life, through the ups and especially the downs. This is a podcast for if you're wanting to live healthier through means of exercise, fitness, nutrition, movement, but also mindset and mental health. This is a podcast for if you're wanting some daily life empowerment, encouragement, maybe someone that you can relate to through my own journey. And today I'm pretty excited because I'm going to share with you something that is happening, kind of a life update for me, something that's happening in my life and a part of my journey, and not necessarily a pivot, but another step in my goals in life, my vision, and what I'm currently doing. I will also be sharing some things that I'm learning about myself, some things that I have learned in this whole process of leaving Anytime Fitness, starting my own business, and then now jumping into what I'm going to be doing next. Before I get into all of that, I just wanted to share that I have three spots available in my coaching program for the month of March. If you are someone who you struggle with yo-yo dieting, body image, confidence, you struggle with food restriction, or maybe you are wanting to start your fitness journey, but you're not really sure how you're going to start. Maybe you're new to the gym, to working out, to all of this health and fitness stuff, and you're wanting some guidance, some accountability, some knowledge, some help. Please feel free to reach out to me and we can just talk more about your goals, what you're looking for in a coach, why you're wanting to reach some of your goals, what your struggles are, what you've tried in the past, and we can just see if we're a good fit for each other. So you can reach out to me via email, flowwiththegirlpodcast at gmail.com, or you can also DM me on Instagram. I'm at Sophia underscore Dawn 41 and shoot me a message and we can find a time to chat. Okay, so I first got introduced to this gym called Coco Fit Club. I don't know if you've heard of it. I never heard of it before my sister actually started working there a few years ago. And I know that there's one, another one in South Dakota somewhere, I think Rapid City, and otherwise I'm not really sure where else they're at, but it's not your normal, typical gym. So when Hannah worked there, my sister, I had the opportunity to go and check it out one time because they needed help with a social media video, and I was like, hell yeah, I'm all for that, count me in, and the owner, Tommy, he was just... I guess, loved my presence on video and it, yeah, it was good. He really enjoyed it and liked it. At the time I was working at Anytime Fitness, so obviously I couldn't work for Coco or anywhere else. So fast forward years later, when he saw that I was leaving Anytime Fitness, he reached out to Hannah to see if I would be interested in training there or working for them, doing some social media. And So she then relayed that message to me. And at the time, I said, yes, I am interested. However, I just wanted to take a break. (laughs) So um, something that I've never really shared before on here is something I'm, I'm about to share. But at the time when leaving Anytime Fitness, that was November, I believe, I just was looking forward to taking a break. I found myself kind of losing my passion for what I was doing, which is was not normal for me. I had been there for like five to six years. And just, you know, the average like typical trainer is like three years, like their time frame, whether they need more money, if it's not the job isn't paying enough, or they're just not enjoying it, or they move, locate, like whatever it is. And um, that I just, I've, I mean, I've always known that this is going to be who I am, a part of me for pretty much the rest of my life, as far as I know right now, currently. And the fact that I was losing passion and I was really taking time to consider, okay, is it because I'm at a burnout and have been at a burnout for six months to a year, or at least it seemed that long. And that's a part of my journey, I guess you could say, that I'm not really going to get into right now. Maybe in a future episode, I will bring light to that and talk more about that. So I was asking myself, is it because I'm at this burnout Or is it because I really do need to take a pivot and change direction, like leave Anytime Fitness, which is ultimately what I decided to do. 
So since I was feeling that way, I just was looking forward to a break, a much needed break. And I told him that I was interested, but I was just kind of getting situated in South Sioux Falls. I was going to take a break for a little, a little bit, but that I would love to meet and chat. So we didn't really talk after that, uh, just kind of let it be. And then I joined a networking group here in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, where I met someone who, as we were talking, as I was kind of introducing myself over the a couple of meetings, he had told me that, well, there's this girl that he knows who works at Coco and Zumba and does like a couple other things. And she she works at, you know, different locations, different gyms. And that was something that I I knew, and Hannah knew too when she was talking to Tommy, that I'm not going to be working for a gym that's going to hold me back from doing my podcast and from doing my own coaching, health and fitness coaching business. I wasn't going to work somewhere where that was conflict of interest because then it would defeat my purpose of me leaving Anytime Fitness and me doing what I'm wanting to do. So she told him that. I don't know exactly what she said, but something along those lines. And he even said, no, this would be very flexible and they there would be no conflict of interest. He wants to do like whatever they can to help me. And yeah, so long story short, like there would not be any conflict of interest and I could pretty much do whatever. Okay, so messaged him and then was waiting a bit. I met up with this networking group where I met this guy named Colin and uh, he connected me to, her name is Dawn, who works at Coco and then does Zumba and all of that. And I messaged her. And actually, because of him telling me that, I that's like why I messaged her and got reconnected to Tommy, which I'm so glad I did. It was perfect timing because I reached out to Dawn, talked to her a little bit, and then I reached back out to Tommy saying, all right, I'm ready to meet and chat about training and seeing like what you have available for me to do and all of that. And he was super stoked. And then later I found out that he was talking to someone else about the position or about training there. I don't know. And then I reached out to him and he, maybe I shouldn't be saying this. I don't know. But he then told the guy, no, it's not going to work out because I was coming in. And so I'm very grateful for that. Very appreciative. Like that's, I'm honored actually. So that's pretty cool. And so I went in and met with Tommy checked out the facility again, and it just felt right. Like it felt like this was the next step. I'm very much, I try to be in tune with my intuition, with my gut feelings, because I know that if I'm presented with an opportunity, like for me, decision-making, and this goes back to human design, if you know what that is, and I'm gonna have a guest on that, but beside the point, my the way that I do best with making decisions is when an opportunity is presented to me and does my gut expand? Does it light me up? Does it excite me? Does it give me energy? Because if it's a hell yes, it's it's a yes. If it's a yes, it's a yes. And if it doesn't, then it's a no. But yes, I want to make opportunities for myself and I want to make things happen. But if an opportunity is presented in front of me and I can make a decision as to yes or no, like I just know in my gut if it's a yes or a no. Okay, so before meeting with Tommy, I wasn't looking for a gym. I wasn't really actively searching for a gym because I, I guess, assumed and pretty much knew that most gyms weren't going to let me, you know, train there while trying to run my own business. And I mean, maybe I shouldn't assume that, but just from past experience, that's what I thought to be true. And I also had another gym reach out to me at one point in Sioux Falls to work there, to train there. I even went and tried a class and I even hopped on their mic thing to like try to just do like a little section of their training. And I mean, I loved it. But then when I met and talked with the owner and who, you know, he was looking for trainers and stuff and I brought up my podcast, my business, he just said that that there was a conflict of interest and that wouldn't work. So that was a no-go. So the fact that Tommy told Hannah, and also I believe he messaged me, I don't remember exactly how that went down. I know he told Hannah this, that there would be no conflict of interest, that I could, you know, promote my things even within Coco and 
that he didn't want to hold me back in that aspect and would be very part-time, very flexible. So I very much appreciated that. So knowing that when I was taking this break of training, just not doing any of that, knowing that I was excited to eventually reach back out to him. So back to um, I met with him at Coco. I knew it was the right decision. It felt right. I was excited. I was energized. And not, not only was it a feeling, but I could truly picture myself being there. And I had all of these ideas just flood to my brain of social media stuff, like things that I could share. And I love, which if you follow me on social media, you probably know and see how much I post. And I love sharing value and I try and share my story and the uptime times, the downtimes, tips, whatever it may be via video. Love being on video. And I was already getting so much, so many ideas. And here's the thing too that I'm going to point out is that I love doing it for myself and I have ideas for myself, but I do so well when I'm placed in a community and in a situation in a facility where I can connect with other people. And yes, I am working for someone in that aspect, but also I do really well with that if I vibe with the place and the people, the people who work there, the the clients, the members. And I was kind of at a point where I kind of questioned whether that was okay or not. Not that that was okay, but, and I know I'm kind of going off track here from what I'm talking about, but I recently listened to a podcast episode and it's called the Empower Her Podcast, which uh, by Kat, Kat Fitz, Fitzgerald, I'm not really sure, but very inspiring and I love it. And she had a guest on one time and she spoke and said how whether you are working for corporate or you have your own business or you're working for someone or not, or like you're in the middle kind of doing both, all of that is okay. Like we need that. We need the doctors. We need the people who do work for corporate to do all these things. And and we need people who are entrepreneurs. But sometimes someone doesn't want to be an entrepreneur. I used to think, why the hell wouldn't someone want to be their own boss? Why wouldn't someone want that freedom and flexibility? I didn't understand it. So then in my mind, I always felt, okay, that's what I need to do. And yes, I envision that for myself. And I do think that I need to do it. And I want to do that. I also knew that, okay, because she mentioned how some people kind of like being in the middle, like they like working for someone, they like being in that environment, whether it's the environment or the people or whatever it is. And it was like, it clicked in my brain, like, oh, okay, that's me. And that's okay. I can have this on my own business. But if I know that I do really well, in a gym facility or, and hopefully down, I mean, a dream of me and Candace is to a vision is to have our own gym, which I believe that we will, throwing that out to the universe. (laughs) But I know that I do really well in that type of setting. I'm a very creative person and I'm creative for myself and for my own business, but I am like, that creativity is like elevated. Being in a community of people in a gym setting So I don't know if you can resonate with that, if that makes sense, if you can pick up what I'm throwing down right now. It's kind of confusing, but hopefully you can relate a little bit. Like if you thrive in the corporate setting, working for someone, that nine to five, the eight to five, you like that structure, hell yeah, go for it. Keep doing it. If you feel like you want to get out of that, you want just something a little bit different, you want to be your own boss, you want to be an entrepreneur, then hell yeah to that too. Like we need all aspects of everything, I think. And I used to not believe that. Okay, so it kind of made it more like, okay, that I was wanting that. So again, hopefully that made sense. Now back to meeting with Tommy Again, it felt right. I was excited. I was creative in the moment. Things just flooded to my brain of things that I could do on social media and in the group and talk about on their page and all of these things. Like my energy was back. My energy is back for being in a gym setting. The next thing I will point out is that he, and for I guess why I'm doing this, he had said that it's very part time and flexible and he's not going to tell me when to work 
He's not going to say, you need to be here from four to seven or six to eight, or these are your hours. Yes, if I'm doing training sessions and I think eventually I'll get to that point, then I'll have to be there at a certain time, obviously, for that class. But he's not going to tell me like from this time to this time. And who the weight that lifted off my shoulders was unbelievable. It's not something that I was too worried about or kind of, I mean, I kind of was thinking because I do really well when I can set my own schedule. I thrive. I will like I put in the time, I do what I'm supposed to do. And before I forget, there's a difference between going above and beyond because you want to and you love it and you see the value in it and knowing when to set boundaries and having boundaries because that's when we can hit that burnout. And okay, so again, a little off topic, that's for another episode. But he said, that he wanted to set my hours, which was amazing. I love setting my own schedule. I like doing, like, I I still, I like the structure of knowing what I'm going to do when, but just to be able to have that freedom. So that's like just another reason as to why this was a hell yes, was because of that. So a couple other things that me and Kiana have talked about since me deciding to do this So I first learned about myself that it's okay to want to work for maybe for someone else and to be in that setting and also have my own business. And one thing, just to be completely open, real, and honest, was something that ran through my mind a lot. And not as much right now anymore, but I had told Kiana one of the my not really concerns or worries, but just something that went through my brain was people are going to think that my business isn't working out. Oh, that thing. They, they see this post um, that I'm going to Coco Fit Club. Their initial thought, my thinking was that their initial thought is that didn't work out. That business thing that she was going to do didn't work out. And it's kind of reinforcing Maybe their initial thought of that business isn't going to work out, whatever it may be. And Kiana actually had told me that that didn't cross her mind. So I'm like, oh, really? Well, maybe other people don't think that either. I'm sure there's people that do and some people that don't. But here's the deal. I'm still working on my business and this podcast. But number one, it's an additional source of income, which I mean, the average, what they say, millionaire has like seven sources of income. And so why not? Okay, number two, yeah, I mean, I need the money. I'm not rolling in. I'm not making bank from this business just yet. I'll get there. I know I will. I have faith I will. Kiana believes in me and has faith that I will, which is amazing. And um, so, yeah, I need the money. I need to have, I figured at some point, maybe I would get a part-time job or part-time gig doing some training or whatever. And this came along like, here you go, universe, here you go. This is on a plate for you to take. I'm going to take it. So I needed the income. It's a good source, a good additional income. I get to be in a community and be more creative with doing social media. And it has to be something that I believe in, right? I'm not just going to do, I'm not just going to join a gym if I don't believe in what they're doing or their values or the, the equipment they have. And I'm so pumped to soon tell you about what they have Um, maybe briefly in this episode, but I am fully on board, which also makes me excited and more creative stuff come into my brain because of that. Another reason I'm doing this is because I'm going to be a part of another community, a new community. I get to meet more people, new people. Is this, do I believe, going to help maybe whether it's my own business and my podcast? Heck yes. And like Tommy was even like, we can, you know, I want to help you too. We can promote your podcast. You can promote your stuff, whatever, within Coco. He's not worried about that. And in fact, he wants to help me, which is phenomenal. Like, I feel like employers employers should want to help their people get to that point of having their own business if that's what they want. That's the beauty of this and um, something that I just was very appreciative of. So, yeah, I'm going to promote them and help them and get to know these people, build relationships. And if a byproduct of that is growth in my business and my podcast, that's 
awesome. And I mean, if not, that's okay. Something else I want to mention, and this mindset has served me so well. Maybe it will for you too. Maybe it won't. I've always had this inner like knowing faith and belief that things are going to work out whether I see it now or not, whether I see it now or maybe in the future down the road, I'm going to connect the dots and be like, okay, this is why this happened. This is what I learned from this and I can now use it right now. So I've always had faith and belief that the right career path will come along will present itself as an opportunity for me to be able to make a decision as to yes or no. It's so weird. I can't, it's like a, I can't explain that sixth, sixth sense. I've just never really been worried about that stuff, which sometimes, yes, maybe that has been not good for me, but for the most part, part, I would say that it has, it's been, it's done more good than not. For example, I know I've said this in a previous episode, but When I got my job at Anytime Fitness, I was, and you might be hearing my dog barking in the background, I'm not really sure, but when I got my job, I was, so before I got the job, I was bartending, I was out of college, I was doing some online coaching through a company called Team Beachbody, which I no longer do, but I was doing that at that time, and I didn't have a quote job, full-time, like normal job. And uh, I had recently gotten certified to teach Pio and Insanity, which are two workouts from Beachbody. I was looking at different gyms, calling people places in Sioux Falls, and I did not call Anytime Fitness in Brookings because I knew that since it was here in town, I'm just going to go in in person and talk to them. Well, one day I was at Hy-Vee, which is connected to Anytime Fitness, I saw the gym and I'm like, you know what, right now I'm going to go in and I'm just going to see if they're looking for anyone or to bring any new classes. And it turns out they actually were like my timing was perfect. Could not have been better. I don't think in my opinion. So they were looking for someone at that time. And that's how I got my job there. Part-time training first, then eventually full-time. But it's like, I just had this, this like knowing and belief and faith that something would come along. And it did. Well, same thing is true for this time in my life where I left Anytime Fitness and I knew that like I would make do. I would be putting my all in this business and my podcast and some it would just work out. Like it just, I just believed it would work out. And so like things just kind of lined up. Like Tommy had messaged Hannah and Hannah asked me and I took that break and then I reached back out to Tommy and then now I'm here. So just things like are lining up and it's like I can connect the dots as to why things are happening and it's working out. So that mindset has served me very well up until this point because you can bet I had people be just, whether they said it or not, just like the naysayers, like, okay, well, are you sure you should be doing this? I don't think it's a good idea. Like you're leaving this full-time, quote, secure job. And it's just not the norm of what people typically do, or it's just not a comfortable thing and our bodies and brains like to keep us safe and comfortable. So yeah, it was a little scary, but that's how also I knew that I needed to do that. And it's like I've let go of the how for how I'm going to get to a certain point, how I'm going to build this business, how I'm going to find a somewhere to work or like to have another source of income. Like I let that go and I just focus on the what and the vision that I have. So that that all pretty much answers the why for why I'm doing this in addition to continuing building this business and this podcast. It's not because this business of mine isn't working out or it's failing or any of that. So now talking more about what it is I'm going to be doing there. First, it's mostly going to be social media, helping them build their social media on Instagram and Facebook and to help them get the word out of what they have to offer and connecting with people and the members. We, there's a member Facebook group and then also the Coco Fit Club Facebook page. So doing their social media, sharing a lot of value and member spotlights and learning more about, again, everything that's inside the club. And then me learning about what they have and about their training sessions and learning more about the clients. And eventually, 
probably doing some training there. Whether it's going to be like me subbing for Dawn or if we find certain times that I'll be training at, but we're taking I, one thing too that I really appreciate is that Tommy is like, we're, we're taking small steps here and one thing at a time, like I'm not going thrown in full force with social media and training and the clients and the non-clients and all of that. Social media first and we'll slowly, we'll see how that goes and then maybe bring in me doing some training. One thing that I'll briefly talk about here for something that they have and that's unique to Coco Fit Club is something called a smart trainer. This is something that I was so skeptical on because I come from a background of, I mean, yes, some machine stuff, but like cables, dumbbells, barbells, kettlebells, like free weight type stuff. And there's a lot of value to that. And I really believe that. And I believe that machines and cables, they can have value as well. I mean, I do cable stuff quite often, but seeing this like one piece of equipment. So what it is, is like a digital, it's, it's digital and they have actual weights where you like cables, where you put the weight in yourself, but it's just this one piece of equipment that you can do like hundreds of exercises and lifts on. It's crazy. And I can see now, like me now learning about it, I can see the value that it has for a certain group of people, like a certain type of person. When I first went to Coco, when Hannah was there, I saw it. I was very skeptical and I was like, what is this? Like this is, I don't want to say dumb because I didn't think that it was dumb, but I just was more so for the freeways and stuff. But me learning about it and doing some of it and actually feeling it like, wow. And it's I, what I like about it, too, is that it slows people down. There's actually a screen and something that is showing you a slow pace and where you're focusing on the muscle and you're iso- like isolating. So like if you're doing a leg extension, it makes you hold it for a couple seconds and then go back down. A lot of people are doing things really fast and it's just not as beneficial sometimes. So I love that. I also love that this is something for someone who is super new to fitness, new to working out. And maybe the gym is super intimidating. Like you go in, there's all this equipment and you're, you have no idea what to do, right? Well, I mean, maybe there's trainers and people that work there, which is fine. They can show you stuff, but it can seem daunting and intimidating. Whereas here, it's just that one piece of equipment. And what I like is that if you don't want a trainer with you right next to you, that's okay. Because you have this thing that is going to show you what to do, tell you what to do, and put you on, like there's specific programs, like six week, eight week programs that you do according to your goals and kind of where you're at in your fitness journey. It's not just random exercises and workouts. It's actually a workout put together already for you. So one thing that I struggled with at Anytime Fitness was that some people didn't want a trainer or like there someone there with them all the time, which sucks because being a trainer, I see the value in having someone being there, showing you what to do, making sure your form is correct, pushing you, like making sure you're doing the right stuff. And the reality though, is that sometimes people just don't want that. They don't. And that was hard for me to accept. (laughs) And so coming to Coco, I've been able to see and hear the stories of people who they don't want a trainer, which fine. But here we're, I'm able to put you on something where you have the workout program, it shows you what to do, it slows you down versus not being able to be there to help them with their form or have something that really shows them what to do. Unless, of course, they use the app or, I mean, there's YouTube videos and stuff, but this is just really nice. And we can, like, they can see, Don and Tommy can see everyone um, and so they can help them with their form and all that. So I see the value in that. That is one aspect that I'm really excited and excited to share about on their social media and get the word out more, get more of the word out about this thing called a smart trainer. If you are in the Sioux Falls area and you want to see it, learn more about it, whatever it may be, definitely reach out, come check it out. You can also follow us on Instagram at Coco Fit Club Sioux Falls and also on Facebook. Our Facebook page is Coco Fit Club Sioux Falls. And if you are, again, wanting to work with me in March and you are in the Sioux Falls area, we can figure, work something out where you come into Coco and whether it's with a smart trainer or the dumbbells, just the dumbbells, we can do that too, where I kind of do that 
independently. If you want to learn more, talk more about it, feel free to shoot me a message, text Instagram message at Sophia underscore Don 41 or email full to grow podcast at gmail.com. All right. So that's that. That's what I'm doing in this next step in my life and why. Tune in next week as I bring on special guest Kisa Amaro to talk about cravings, emotional eating, a lot of nutrition food stuff, mindset with that, kind of where cravings maybe stem from, and helping you to lose your cravings. If you haven't yet already done so, I would very much appreciate if you would leave a five-star rating and review. This helps the show grow, get more eyeballs on the show, and be seen by more people. I appreciate you. Thank you for being here. I love you. We'll chat soon. And with that, have a great rest of your day, night, week, weekend. Bye for now. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Flow with the Grow. I'll see you next week for your daily dose of positivity and growth.